Welcome on board the National Geographic Explorer for this epic expedition exploring the area of Patagonia. On this expedition, we're going to be exploring spectacular fjords, amazing glaciers. We're going to be getting up close and personal with some unique wildlife and of course, getting to know the locals of the area. Delicious. I hope you enjoy this epic Patagonian expedition to the end of the world. Karukinka Natural Park. This is a privately protected area owned by the WCS, the Wildlife Conservation Society. Uh, the park was established in 2004 and Karukinka means our land in the Selknam language. Karukinka has 300,000 hectares, so we protect many amazing ecosystems, subantarctic forest, peat bog. We based our conservation work in science. We invite researchers from all over the world and our own staff do research with the elephant seals, with the albatross, uh, with the pristine ecosystems that we have here. So scientific research is important for us to uh, find solutions for the conservation problems we have. Doing conservation in Chile at the moment is quite a challenge. There's no philanthropic culture in the country as there is in the US, that's one of the big challenges we face. Chile is getting better in that, but still there's a long way to go to get people involved in these type of projects. One can be a tourist, but also participate in helping improve the places that we visit. This is a beautiful area. It's part of a private reserve that they're trying to re-establish and keep clean and unfortunately wind brings a great deal of plastic and trash to this area and many of our guests have volunteered to pick up this trash, to pick up this plastic and hope to restore this to the beautiful pristine environment it was meant to be. So this morning here while we're at Karakinka we're having an incredible opportunity to get Pretty up close and personal looks at the southern elephant seal, which is one of them positioned just behind my shoulder here. A young sub-adult male probably that's lounging around after the breeding season. These animals range uh, from about this point in South America all the way down to Antarctica. And here we're getting an incredible opportunity to see an animal that has evolved to live in the deep ocean. They are incredibly deep divers, one of the deepest diving and longest diving marine mammals in the world. And in the elephant seal life, being a young elephant seal is not an easy job because their mothers will only nurse them for a little bit under a month and then they're on their own. And at that point they're called weaners because they've been weaned from the female, left to live off the incredibly rich fat deposits that they've laid down from their birth till the time their mothers uh, abandon them here on the beaches. They have several months where they won't feed. Eventually, that food source, that fat reserve, wears out and they have to go out to sea to feed. These animals are primarily eating invertebrates um, down very, very deep uh, in the ocean and they live a long time. This young male that's here is not a mature bull. A mature bull elephant seal can be approaching 20 feet in length and weighing possibly over four tons. Good morning, we are in Garibaldi Fjord. So it's gonna be a challenging Zodiac cruise this morning with uh, so much ice in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like a margarita. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> And you never know when it's gonna calve. It's been fairly active, but if you hear it, you've missed the fall because the sound travels slower than what you see. So you have to be watching the glacier all the time. 
Most of the time the glacier is moving from the snow that accumulates up the top, near the top. So it's pressing it, there's a lot of pressure and gravity essentially, gravity and the pressure up at the top moves the glacier down. Not so much warming up because it's not warming up all that much. The tide has a little bit of effect on it as well, um, and they have a couple meter tide in here. It depends also on whether the actual ice is floating or if it's sitting on the bottom. It's not necessarily sitting on the bottom. If it's floating, then it tends to calve more, more of it will drop off. The black, that has come from the side of the glacier or down on the bottom. It's rock that gets picked up by the ice, and when it's on the side, that acts like sandpaper. It's grinding against the sides of the fjord. On the, each side, it's called lateral moraine, that rock and rock in the ice, and it'll get deposited at the bottom in front of the glacier. It acts like a bulldozer sometimes. That is called a terminal moraine, terminal being that's as far as the glacier got or it sat there for a while. It acts like a conveyor belt, essentially, bringing rock and gravel and materials from the sides as it picks it up. You also have that black area in the middle, sort of over the, the uh, zodiacs there. That's medial moraine. And that, what that indicates is there's been two glaciers further up the valley that have come together. So that is sort of a, like a stripe in the road and you can sort of get an idea if you are over a glacier, how many side glaciers have come in by how many of these medial moraines or medial lines. Cape Horn, the southern tip of South America, is one of the most famous places in the world. It has a reputation among mariners that exceeds practically any other well-known point on the entire planet. Year-round, strong westerly winds blow through this passage between South America and Antarctica, and it was an extremely difficult place for sailors to transit. You could be trying to get through and then be blown back, try again, be blown back again. Sometimes sailors spent months, literally months, simply trying to make the passage around the horn. Uh, this place is especially significant to me because about a hundred years ago, my grandfather sailed on an expedition around Cape Horn. Obviously, he had a very good captain and a very strong ship, but it's a very significant place for me. So here in Cape Horn, we are just uh, making sure that all the passports are getting stamped. Since it's uh, so difficult to land here, it's uh, very frequently that uh, we have to bypass rather than land. So it's a very unique stamp to have in your passport as a souvenir.
Another famous feature of Cape Horn is the Albatross Monument, a beautiful and unique sculpture where the shape of the albatross is made not by the metal of the monument, but by the space between the two huge metal triangles. For me, it's a great idea because there's a beautiful poem on the plaque here that talks about the albatross carrying the spirits of dead mariners from all around the world. And this is a wonderful way to depict a spirit albatross, I think. It's not a solid thing, it's an empty space, a creature of the wind. And that's a great way to think about those birds and about the spirits of lost sailors. On this trip, we are running the Chilean fjords, visiting Patagonia and ending in Staten Island. For the dive team on board, this is a real treat. We don't do this trip that often in, in the year, so it provides us a chance to really get in and explore what these places have to offer. Now this is cold water, so it's a very specific environment, often with a lot of kelp, a lot of crabs, and a whole lot of other invertebrates that we're not sure we're gonna find until we do. And when we do, we use our macro lens to get up as close as possible to find those little details that bring sort of the nuance of their story to life. One of the big highlights of these dives and one of the biggest creatures we encounter is the southern king crab. Now, they are large and have lots of spines and can change. Sometimes they're very skittish and they'll run away, but other times they'll walk right up to us and sort of check out who we are because they really are one of the apex predators of the seafloor. Not a lot has the ability to eat them when they're in their adult phase, so they're often curious and want to know what are these bubble-breathing mammals doing filming them. But I think one of the largest stories of this marine ecosystem is the kelp. It's long and beautiful. We see it on our zodiac rides, and it provides a home for a lot of these invertebrates. It helps them to hide or hold on during the strong currents that happen in a tidal change, and it also provides food. Where there is algae in the ocean, there is life. It is as simple as that, and for every stop that we've visited on this destination, every time we see kelp, we're pretty excited to get in the water. Today we're on Staten Island, not the Staten Island that I grew up with around uh, New York and New York Harbor, but Staten Island, Argentina. One surprise here, right where we landed, is that there is one king penguin that, uh, a little bit lost, I guess, but is here molting just down the beach over there. I think all travel gives us the opportunity to gain perspective, and that makes the rest of our lives much richer when we go home and we have a bigger sense of the world. You see such huge landscapes and such big seascapes, and you get a sense of really how big the world is and how much of the world still remains. And yet, ironically, every place we go, there are issues of change. And it's really our time now, as the most privileged people in the history of the world, to take it upon ourselves to make sure that along with the survival of human beings, we bring with us the survival of all the other life forms on Earth. Our success should not come at the expense of everything else that lives in this world. And when we're on trips like this, we get a much better sense of who is in the world with us and what the challenges are and what we need to do to safeguard the future. Today is the last day of the expedition and we are in a wildlife paradise observatory island off of Staten Island. We have thousands of birds around us. We have the blue-eyed shags. Uh, behind me there's the wonderful snowy sheathbill known for being a poop specialist. And penguins, the Magellanic penguin, one of the two so-called jackass penguins of the South American continent.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this spectacular, epic expedition through the Patagonian fjords. And we'll see you next time somewhere else on this beautiful blue planet.